Welcome to the Juniper Threat Labs attack demo series. Today's subject is CLOP ransomware. Following a brief description of CLOP ransomware and the gang behind it, this video will demonstrate how malicious threat actors conduct a CLOP ransomware attack. Afterward, we'll show you how Juniper customers can protect themselves. CLOP ransomware comes from a Russian-speaking threat actor group that bears the same name. First identified in 2019, these malicious threat actors have their ransomware sites set on large companies in North America, Latin America, Europe, and Asia. As of July 2023, the CLOP ransomware gang has been linked to attacks on over 400 organizations, including U.S. banks, healthcare organizations, and universities. In fact, the U.S. government recently offered a $10 million bounty for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the CLOP ransomware gang. In May 2023, the CLOP ransomware gang began exploiting a vulnerability in Progress Software's managed file transfer solution, MoveIt Transfer. This vulnerability, CVE 2023-34362, is an SQL injection vulnerability that can be exploited to execute arbitrary code on the target server. Exploiting this vulnerability, the CLOP ransomware gang has been gaining access to internet-facing MoveIt managed file transfer web applications. After gaining access, Attackers plant a web shell on the target server. The web shell is a malicious web app hosted by the victim, to which the attacker connects in order to remotely control that target server. The CLOP ransomware gang then uses the web shell to steal data from the target server and subsequently deploy the CLOP ransomware, making their system unusable without a ransom. The CLOP ransomware gang is a sophisticated and well-funded group of attackers. They are constantly evolving their attack methods. CLOP Ransomware employs an arsenal of diverse malware tools, including the flawed Amy Rat, TrueBot, SDBot, Cobalt Strike, and Web Shells. As we mentioned earlier, the group's operational history traces back to 2019. The CLOP gang, which is either related to or includes two other cyber criminal gangs, TA505 and Fin11, typically victimizes their targets through extensive spear phishing campaigns as their primary attack vector and then attacking known or unknown software vulnerabilities. During 2020 and 2021, they shifted their focus to exploiting Excellian FTA servers and deploying the Doom Mode web shell. In January 2023, the group was observed exploiting Go Anywhere MFT and enabling remote code execution. Most recently, they've been targeting MoveIt managed file transfer sites, as we mentioned earlier, and installing the Lemur Loot web shell. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're diving into the post-exploitation phase. We're therefore already assuming the presence of an already established web shell on the victim that is remotely accessible to the malicious threat actor. With the web shell in place and acting as the attacker, we will utilize the web shell to initiate the download and installation of CLOP ransomware, which will encrypt all the files on the infected system. All right, let's get started. Here we have a Kali Linux machine that belongs to the attacker. And from here, we will further assume that this attacker can access the target victim server at IP address 192.168.206.145, where the malicious web shell has already been successfully installed following exploitation. Acting as the attacker, we're connecting to this web shell through the browser to the victim whose IP address ends in 145. As you will see, once connected, we will execute a PowerShell command to download and install CLOP ransomware file clop.exe that once installed encrypts the victim's files. Okay. The attacker on the Kali Linux PC is now connected to the web shell installed on the victim's PC. To provide a clearer visual representation of what is happening under the covers, so to speak, we're running Wireshark on the victim's Windows PC. To this point, the attacker at the IP address ending in 140 has requested and received the web shell, as you saw on the browser moments ago. Back on the attacker's PC, we are hosting the malicious ransomware file clop.exe. We'll start a web server on the attacker, such that we can direct the victim through the web shell to download and install clop.exe. The attacker, having confirmed that the web server is running and that the clop ransomware is readily available, returns to the web shell. The malicious threat actor then uses a PowerShell command that directs the victim PC to retrieve and install the clop ransomware. As you can see, the victim's machine at 192.168.206.145 was manipulated through the web shell connection by the attacker to register a GET request for clop.exe. Inspecting Wireshark logs on the target victim's PC, we see that the malicious file clop.exe has been successfully downloaded. Using a process monitor, we can verify that the ransomware was not just downloaded, but executed as well.
At this stage, Klopp is utilizing a significant amount of CPU as it is busy encrypting files. We can verify that many of the files are already encrypted as the ransomware adds a .clop extension to each encrypted file. We can open such files verifying that the contents are unreadable. Unencrypted in its normal form, this JavaScript file would contain human-readable text. For each folder, Klopp also adds a ransom note, klopreadme.txt, details about contacting the attackers to obtain the keys and how the victim restores his or her their files are provided in these readme files. Let's now look and see whether or not this attack works as successfully with a Juniper SRX firewall enhanced with protection from Juniper's cloud-based advanced anti-malware solution, Juniper ATP. For this part of the demo, Juniper Threat Labs is using the following setup. We have a VSRX pictured in the center. The VSRX is a virtual SRX firewall providing network security protection. Its purpose is to inspect network traffic and with the assistance of Juniper ATP Cloud to detect malware like CLOP ransomware. In addition to the virtual firewall and the cloud-based protections, we are using Juniper Security Director, which is a centralized management system. Security Director facilitates our configuring and monitoring of the VSRX firewall. And we are using Juniper's Policy Enforcer as well. Juniper's Policy Enforcer enforces security policies on endpoints and ensures they comply with corporate security standards. Pictured as well are several Windows workstations, each of which is connected to the VSRX. And finally, there is an Ubuntu server which is acting as the malware download server. Before we proceed and run the CLOP ransomware attack simulation with protection provided by Juniper's connected security solutions, let's first take a look at the threat prevention policy that we've set up on our security director and applied to the VSRX. To access the policy, we'll navigate to the Configure tab and we'll select Threat Prevention and Policies. As you can see, we already have an existing policy in place. Let's further inspect the protections being enforced by the applied policy. So, for the demo, our policy is configured to block command and control traffic at threat level 7 and above, and we've also set it to block infected hosts at threat level 8 and above. Additionally, we've configured our policy to use ATP Cloud for malware detection. As you can see, we've elected to scan HTTP downloads. Finally, we've chosen to block any and all threats rated at level 7 and above. This threat prevention policy applied to the Juniper VSRX firewall is a critical component of our defenses protecting our systems against malware-related attacks, including malicious CLOP ransomware. It allows us to detect and block malicious traffic as well as the activity of potentially infected hosts, which will then prevent the spread of malware across our network in the event that one of our systems gets compromised. Acting as would-be malicious threat actors for the demo, let's now proceed in launching the attack with Juniper Connected Security Solutions in place. So to begin, we connect to the already installed web shell running on the target victim server at 100.123.32.3. Next, we run the PowerShell command in the web shell that attempts to download the CLOP ransomware before launching it on the victim server. Looking at Wireshark on the intended victim's machine, we see the post request from the attacker when he entered the PowerShell command into the web shell. But that is all we see. We see no reply from our would-be victim, at least, no reply just yet. So anyhow, after a short period of time following the attempted attack, it displays an error which reads, unable to connect to the remote server. In this case, the quote-unquote remote server is the malware server malware.vault101.com. Looking again at Wireshark on the would-be victim's machine, we finally do see the same error. So what happened? What happened was that the Juniper VSRX with ATP was able to detect and block the attempted download of the CLOP ransomware. We can go back to our security director to find more details about this blocked CLOP ransomware attack. Under the HTTP download tab, we can see information about the detected malware, including the threat level, hash, and URL associated with the malware.
Switching from Security Director to ATP Cloud, we can click on the file signature or hash to see more details. These details include a static analysis of the malware that show you different types of information collected by analyzing the static properties of the file when it's not being run. Juniper additionally provides behavior analysis, which includes information collected as a result of running the malware in a sandbox. We can see network activity and behavior details, including processes that would have been spawned, as well as information about this malicious threat related to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. It is important to note that Juniper ATP identifies whether a file is a threat or not using machine learning, as well as the information just discussed, thus without the need for any signatures. Now we switch back to Security Director. Note that while the attack was unsuccessful, recall that the security policy being enforced on the VSRX blocks host network activity when it detects threats at level 8 and above. This host then is now disconnected temporarily from the network. Security Director is informing the admin that this host or server appears to have attempted to download malware, i.e. the CLOP ransomware, which has a threat level of 10. We can confirm that this host is temporarily blocked from network usage by attempting to browse the internet. You'll see that the user cannot do much, at least right now. Thus, if there was more going on than the isolated unsuccessful attack, the rest of the network would be protected. Once the admin is sure that the host or server is indeed free from infection, she can first select the host and then under the investigation status section, she can select Resolved Fixed, which changes the status of this host to Clean. After a few moments, this host will be able to resume network usage. We can verify that once again just by browsing the net. That completes our demo of CLOP Ransomware. Check out more videos from the Juniper Threat Labs Attack demo series by visiting juniper.net. Thanks for watching.